Thank you, uh, Secretary English, for, uh, for all that you do, Secretary English. Thank you, Secretary English. For all, yes, she is. Um, for all that you do, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, in a moment, but uh, certainly my charge right now is to welcome all of you uh, to this Black History Month celebration. Um, it is really, it, it's been a year now uh, since the advisory council, since the executive order establishing the advisory council was signed. And um, we could not, as members of this body, be more excited about the moment um, that we're in. And so welcome on behalf of the Black Empowerment Advisory Council. I do want to thank, and the governor is on her way, I do want to thank Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll um, for their leadership, for their vision um, in establishing this council with very clearly, with a very clear articulated mission and purpose. And that is to serve as an advisory body to the administration on issues of importance and impact to the black community across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We have spent now a year uh, moving across the Commonwealth in community, meeting with residents in a number of communities across the Commonwealth to get a better understanding of the issues, the challenges, but also um, what's working well uh, in, the, in our very vibrant black community across the Commonwealth. And so I'm elated that today, as part of today's um, program, we will be recognizing several individuals who represent those communities. Um, and you'll learn more about them in a moment. I want to acknowledge also the various cabinet secretaries who took time out of their schedules to help lay a foundation for us as a council. Uh, several of them are here today. Um, and I want to thank each of you um, for your leadership and for allowing us as a council to be part of your, the early days of your planning, your development, and we look forward to continuing our work with you. Thank you for your leadership. I also want to acknowledge the art that is here in this space today. What we know as a black community is that our history is marked with advocacy and the fight for freedom, justice, and equality on so many issues. Whether we're talking about education or economic opportunity, whether we're talking about climate and environmental justice or health care and access or the fight for our political rights. So much of our history has been about a fight. But what we also know is that our history is deeply rooted in celebration and joy. What we also know is that we come from a people that has been blessed by God with so many gifts that bring joy into communities. And the arts have been an important part of our history and not only our existence, but our ability to thrive in this country. And so we do have on display um, today several pieces of artwork that our governor and lieutenant governor asked um, be here today, but these pieces also sit in the executive suite. And we know we have several of the artists of this work here with us today. And so we want to thank you for your contributions to ensuring that we here in the black community are seen and that our joy is also celebrated. So thank you. I 
I want to acknowledge and thank uh, the Deputy Chief of Staff in his absence in his office, uh, Marconi Almeida Barros. He's unable to be here with us today, but uh, the Deputy Chief of Staff has played a very important role in helping to ensure we as a council have been able to meet our charge. And I want to acknowledge if his, if his team can wave their hands in the room for the work that they've done. And where did she go? Chief English, yes. <laughs> and acknowledging her presence is not enough. I definitely want to pause and make sure that we appropriately acknowledge uh, Chief Secretary April English. <laughs> Because contrary to popular belief, uh, supporting out the work of the council is not in her job responsibility, okay? Um, but this is work that she is deeply committed to, and ensuring is not just paying lip service to us as a community, but that we actually have the resources, the tools, and the support necessary to advance the recommendations um, that we put forward uh, to the administration. And so, Chief English, thank you for your leadership. I want to now ask um, one of the members of our council uh, to come forward uh, to provide us with a spiritual grounding, uh, Pastor Philane Derenette. Again, uh, in our community, what we know is that we have been able to move forward as a people, as black people in this country. We've been able to move forward with consistency, with intentionality, with consistent hope for what this country can be primarily because we are rooted in faith. And so it is only fitting that we're bringing faith into this space. And so I'd like to ask our, our pastor for today to come forward with an uh, invocation. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would uh, kindly ask for everyone, uh, if you are able, uh, to please stand up uh, and um, incline your heads. Thank you, Tanisha, because you recognized everyone. So I'm like, but I'm recognizing you and Vice Chair Tony Richards uh, on this moment as well. Thank you for your work and your leadership. Okay. I will lead you in the moment of player, prayer. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for the day you have made. Yes, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for our elected leaders, especially our governor, our lieutenant governor, and every single elected leader in their res respective and respected members of their teams that work on behalf of this blessed commonwealth. We ask that your divine intervention be upon their work and lives. Please provide them with insight into the needs of every community in our commonwealth and grant them discernment to make decisions with your wisdom as we rejoice in the knowledge that you are the foundation of all wisdom and that we all are crafted by your hands with purpose and precision. On this day, Father, we come to you to remember the contributions of the black lives, the black wisdom, and black sacrifices of those who contribute in the past, our present, and in the future to the society that you have designed. Though in the midst of injustice and undeniable hate, you have lifted the great work of our elders, who you gave foresight and forethought to be bold and courageous for the experience of freedom and joy that they desperately craved. 
Your word says that you love justice and have established the measures of fairness and equity. Father, we ask you that you give us guidance in our respective areas of influence to lead, to lead in the protecting of black lives in joy, to lead in the investing of black lives with joy, and to lead in the caring of black lives in joy. We pray this in the name of the Lord who loves with joy. And we all said, amen. Thank you, Pastor. I want to now acknowledge and ask them to stand uh, the members of the Advisory Council on Black Empowerment so that we can acknowledge and thank you for your service. Would you please stand? <laughs> Tony and I have been working y'all hard for the last year, so thank you. <laughs> Truly we do. Um, and um, with that, I want to invite uh, my vice chair, uh, Tony Richards, to come forward uh, to bring greetings and uh, to make uh, an introduction of our lieutenant governor. We are both um, incredibly um, excited about the trajectory of our work um, and we look forward to before the close of this month um, providing as I like to remind us one year ahead of schedule providing uh, the governor and lieutenant governor with the first set of recommendations um, setting our priorities of the uh, of the council going forward and so I I am truly honored and thrilled, feel blessed every day um, that on this journey I have a partner in Tony um, in his leadership and so I do want to invite him to come forward to provide some remarks. Thank you. So I have the distinct honor of introducing the Lieutenant Governor. Um, but a, a few things uh, came to mind, which I want to make sure to mention. Um, when I was thinking about uh, one word which describes this administration, I would say intentional. Um, you know, I, I don't use that word lightly as well. And from day one, this administration has been intentional around identifying um, opportunities, policies, and strategies that narrow racial wealth gaps. Um, there's a quick story, uh, Crystal, who's the mass housing CEO who just lets me do a whole bunch of stuff that you guys appreciate. Um, so we can clap it up for Crystal. Gives me, gives me uh, free reign to um, you know, just operationalize a bunch of uh, crazy um, ideas which are important and impactful. We, we met um, a few times in my previous role, in the Lieutenant Governor's previous role, we've crossed paths, but I think the, the most uh, impactful and important time I can remember is when Crystal and I went to uh, then Mayor uh, Driscoll's office in uh, Salem um, at, the, at the tail end of COVID where we still had to wear masks, um, so she probably doesn't recognize me because I just sat in a room and just listened to her <laughs> kind of whole court mostly. And um, I think it was very impactful to reflect on how unapologetic she was around um, policies that created economic mobility and advancement explicitly with black and brown people. Um, so that, that was a, a, a moment and an opportunity in real time, in practice, not on a podium where the real work is being made um, that I appreciate it. And uh, in closing, so my, my grandmother, who I, uh, she partly raised me, she's from the rural south, she's from a small town called Camilla, Georgia, um, and she grew up in extreme segregation and poverty, and she has a saying which is, is very familiar to many black people in this room that says, keep on keeping on, right? So at, at a lot of big moments in my life, I think the most impactful time she said it is when I graduated from college, 
and she told me how important education was um, with our people historically working to um, pull us out of poverty by creating opportunities to increase wealth and assets. So with, with that saying, as I introduce the Lieutenant Governor, I would say um, my kind, humble words to the administration is to keep on keeping on. So with that, you have the Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. So great to be with you. You know, because of Leap Year, we have an extra day of Black History Month. Just want to acknowledge that. Thank you, Tony and Tanisha, for all of the service that you're providing, chairing uh, the Black Empowerment Council. Um, really appreciate everyone being here who's a, a part of that very special effort. You know, there's a reason that empowerment is in the title of that body, because we firmly believe Many of us are aware of the inequities. We have a good handle on what the challenges are. And this particular body is about those recommendations and action and what are we doing to tackle the things that we know that exist in this Commonwealth. And I know Governor Healy and I both feel very strongly that this is about getting things done in, in not only this space, but when it comes to housing, when it comes to climate, when it comes to making Massachusetts more affordable and more competitive, more equitable. Um, that takes action. And this is a group of doers. Of all of the councils we put together, I think April can speak to this as well. You know, we try to have a manageable number of people around the table because you're trying to get the work done and you can't have a group that's too big um, and you can't have a group that's too small. And in this group, the number of folks we heard from who were not a part of it were as angry as the group who was excited to be a part of it. And I actually think that's a great thing that there was so much interest uh, from folks across the Commonwealth to serve um, in, this, in this opportunity to not only talk about black history during Black History Month, but to, to get to the doing of this work 12 months of the year. We're so grateful to be joined by so many members of our cabinet who are here, Secretary Snyder, Secretary Jones, Secretary, uh, I just call her Kate. Uh, <laughs> she's got over half the budget, so Secretary Walsh, Secretary Howe, Secretary Reedy. Um, we are intentional about wanting to make sure as we celebrate these amazing opportunities the governor and I have, that members of our team are here. I know you were at the Boston Chamber earlier. We travel in a pack. That's another way of saying that. But it's purposeful because these are opportunities that are rare when we're able to celebrate, come together, and lift up um, what we're doing as a commonwealth, what we're not doing and we need to do as a commonwealth. And that's in very large measure what today is about. The artist work that you're seeing here uh, was actually up in the governor's office uh, most of the last week, most of the last month, uh, recognizing black artists. And, you know, we strongly believe this is what excellence looks like in the Commonwealth. And the opportunity to showcase that for more individuals is an honor that we feel so privileged to be able to share. Um, earlier this month, we welcomed a number of young people into the governor's office. Um, relative to Black History Month from our Boys and Girls Club, it was just school vacation week, highlighting some of the work uh, in our office. Um, many of you may be familiar with Robert Freeman's work um, that is hanging in the governor's office on loan from the MFA. Note to the MFA, you may never get that back. Um, <laughs> and it was a really special opportunity to showcase um, Mr. Freeman's work, but to see young adults and their emotions and the way their eyes lit up when they saw that very work. This is a very small picture capturing what this work is. It's known as the dinner party. Both Mr. Freeman and his wife were present to be able to talk about what the inspiration was for this, uh, to share uh, things that worked well and didn't work well in his life, and to listen to our young adults, budding artists themselves, talk about their motivation and what's driving them. And it really reminded, I think, all of us who were there of the amazing talents we have within the black community, to see these young budding artists talking to someone who's very successful, whose portrait hangs on our wall and hangs in the MFA when it's not there, um, was moving. And I think speaks to what our opportunities are every day, to lift up black voice, to empower our commonwealth to do better, not just for some, but for all. And that really is what the work of this Empowerment Council is. And frankly, that's uh, what the governor and I see as our role while in office. We have a privilege and a responsibility. We take that seriously. And we come together uh, to do that in a su successful way. Certainly, the history in this building is all of our history. And the future of our state is all of our futures. And the ability for us to recognize Black History Month today as we head towards the close of Black History Month in a meaningful and powerful way is really important. And all of you are a part of that. 
And the reason I'm excited um, to be able to do this work, not just today what we're doing, but the digging in, the hard stuff, right? Frankly, today's easy. And I don't say that in a disrespectful way. It's easy to come together and celebrate artists and recognize the opportunities that we have. It's what we're going to do after we leave here that gets hard, the digging in on home ownership opportunities, the recognition that we need educational equity in our commonwealth and what that looks like, and how we change these systems. Some of that will come out of these recommendations that we know we're going to be putting into action. That's the type of leadership um, that we hope to deliver in this commonwealth and why I'm so grateful to be here uh, working alongside an amazing partner who ensures that every single day our administration is focused on equity, on not just an agenda, but the hard work of digging in and tackling these issues. I'm grateful to have uh, the work that I do every single day uh, in, with a terrific partner who's our governor, <laughs> who is rushing from one thing to another to be here but definitely did not want to miss, uh, miss this day and a chance to celebrate Black History Month as we come to a close. So with that, grateful to work with you, Governor Healy. So glad to have you as our leader in the Commonwealth, Governor Maura Healy. Good afternoon. Oh, let's give a big hand to our fabulous Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Um, she is just the best, and I think, you know, um, one of the things that she and I really, really value and love is being able to come into this job as first, um, because as first, we're the first all-female team to be uh, governor and lieutenant governor in the country. And, and the, the reason I say that, it's actually, trust me, it's not because of ego. It's to make a point, which is that when you're a first, see, there isn't a template. Some of you may still think we're a little nuts for hanging that empty frame in the governor's office, but we did that with intentionality. When we asked young people, who do you think we should hang? Whose governor's portrait should we hang? Which is a tradition of the governor of the state. The essay we received back that struck was the essay submitted by students in Western Massachusetts who said, Governor, hang just the frame. Hang just the frame. One, because you shouldn't be looking to the past for inspiration, look to the future. Representation matters, seen as believing, and we want every young person who comes into this building and into that office to be able to see themselves and not be defined by what has been the norm as you walk through the beautiful halls of this historic building. And so know that on behalf of the LG and myself and our entire team, we are so proud of so many uh, wonderfully talented individuals who've come to serve with us and all of you. And we are grateful to them, including I think what is the most diverse cabinet in history, also diversity up and down the ranks of an administration, which is where you actually make it real, right? That's where you make it real. And so in that spirit, we welcome everybody to the State House and honor the work. Talk about two people who have stepped forward. Tanisha Sullivan and Tony Richards, thank you so much. for serving as our co-chairs of our Black Empowerment Council, meeting regularly, reporting regularly, directing regularly, conversations on the books and off the books, most importantly, about what we need to be doing. We are grateful to you and to all council members who serve. We're grateful to our colleagues in the legislature. We're proud of what we were able to do this past year and look forward to what we can do in the year ahead. I see us joined today by so many members of our wonderful Black and Latino Caucus and so many more. Um, we have, I know, and I'm gonna miss people, so just give me a note. Uh, Representative China Tyler, Representative Kip Diggs, Representative Chris Worrell, Representative Brandy Fluker Oakley, uh, Leader Mike O'Day, uh, Representative Mandy Cruz, uh, Representative Fiola, Representative, Jim, it's great to see you. Um, who else is here? I, 
Rev Dubois is here. Okay, great. We got we got more people. Uh, Rev Day, nice to see you. Uh, I said. Oh, I said. I, I'm not. I'm not confused. <laughs> I am not confused. No. One of the best dress uh, members of our. E even though he never wears socks, he is still one of the best dress <laughs> members of the legislature. Representative Jim O'Day. I mean that too. Okay. Anyhow, um, we're going to turn to clergy now. So thank you very much, uh, Pastor Philane Duranet. Thank you so much for sharing the gift of, of faith uh, and community with all of us this afternoon. Um, to my cabinet uh, team members and others in, in the administration, thank you so much for being here. And thank you to our artists, to our innovators, to our business owners, and to our community leaders as well, um, whose work, some of which we celebrated, and uh, young boys and girls were in last week uh, to see on display firsthand. I hope that you all have had a meaningful Black History Month. Black history is American history. I want every month to be a meaningful Black History Month. Today, though, does give us a special opportunity to reflect on our history and to commit and recommit to affirming these truths as we move forward all year round. Black history is American history. Um, you see that in this building. This was a building, of course, the first cornerstone of the foundation was laid by Paul Revere and Sam Adams. But as importantly, it is just outside this building that the 54th Regiment mustered to set off to fight the war to end slavery. It's where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood in this very state house in the chamber just down the way and called on us to make real the promise of democracy. And it's where members of the Black and Latino Caucus continue to lead us every day. Massachusetts is a state of firsts and the black community has led the way from Phyllis Wheatley, one of America's great poets, to the courageous men and women who sued for their freedom, and by doing so made Massachusetts the first state to abolish slavery. The heroes of abolition, abolition and the Underground Railroad. Um, we think about our friend from Great Barrington, W.E.B. Du Bois one of the world's greatest intellectuals, the first chartered branch of the NAACP, celebrated and led by our own Tanisha Sullivan last summer. That was a party. <laughs> Melnia Cass, Bill Russell, Mel King, who we miss. Our state, like our country, has not always lived up to the standard, the expectation they set for us. But they built us a legacy. Our obligation is to live up to that legacy and to make real the promise of democracy in our time. As Frederick Douglass taught us, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Justice and equity don't just happen. We have to be intentional. We have to bring that energy we have to bring that focus. We have to bring that persistence. We have to bring that resilience in the face of what feels like sometimes unrelenting, punishing efforts to hold us back. And I think more than ever, and one thing I have seen this year in incredible beauty, despite some of the divisiveness and vitriol we experience within our state and across this country, I have seen the power of community. And I have seen people step up and step forward in ways that are transformational. Now, I think to do all this, it starts with representation. And that's why we have black leadership across the administration. From our cabinet, which is the most diverse ever, 
to the nearly 600 members of boards and commissions headed up uh, by our Chief Secretary, April English, who are more diverse than the population of our state. In this way, together we are able to advance the work so black and Latino owned businesses have a fair opportunity at contracts so that every young person has equitable access to an excellent education, college, and economic opportunities. To make sure that everyone can get high quality homes that they can afford. To advance our health equity strategy that leads the nation with a focus on closing the gaps in maternal health. Criminal justice reform, where we've pardoned more folks in less time than the last 40 years, with more to come. And to a tourism strategy as we approach the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution, where we will make sure that the whole story is told. You know, two weeks ago, we held our weekly cabinet meeting at the Museum of African American History, right nearby on Beacon Hill. And I think for all of us who were there, it was really powerful. Director Dr. Noel Trent started us off with a tour of the space and the exhibits. And if you need an inspiring place to meet and gather, I recommend that location to you. It's a sacred space. It's where centuries of black Bostonians created a school, a church, a place to find safety and community, a place to organize. It was a special feeling to be in that space with the most, I already bragged on the most diverse cabinet, Diversity matters, but more than anything, outcomes matter. And that's what you should hold us accountable to. But I just say, it was a special feeling. It was a special feeling. And I think it certainly left me feeling all the more committed to and understanding the solemnity of the responsibility that we have and also the opportunity we have to seize this moment to drive real change. As some leaders across our country openly espouse, and it's not just leaders, we have seen everyday residents and citizens espouse white nationalism, espouse white supremacy. We see others looking to attack the right to vote, take away access to free elections, stifle democracy. We see others looking to strip access to education, to DEI and affirmative action, all these things there simply to address centuries of systemic racism. We see others looking to rewrite history and rewrite our history books. Speaking of books, ban books from libraries, shut down libraries, deny young people knowledge of our nation's history and truths. See, at this moment, when I see all that, I think this is our moment. This is our moment to make sure that we are doing everything we can across the state, across every 351 cities and towns to make clear who we are, to live that legacy that others laid for us. We've got to be a state where everyone learns the whole truth of history and turns that knowledge into power. We must be the state that not only knows our history, we have to be the state that continues to make history. And to do that, we look to the continued leadership, courage of our black community. From civil rights organizations to business owners to brilliant academics to healthcare champions, black leadership has been and will be a key to Massachusetts success. And to that end, we're going to produce, uh, uh, present, we have already produced, right, team? Jordan? Did everybody know Jordan Crispin on our team? Okay, great. We're going to 
present citations to some incredible, amazing leaders from around this state. We begin with Kenny Lumpkin. Where is Kenny? Come on down. So, Ken, thank you, thank you. Come right around here. Kenny's from Springfield. Um, he's the owner of two restaurants, Dewey's, ja Dewey's Jazz Lounge and the All-American Bar Grill and Patio. They're not only great places to eat, but they strengthen community. And we congratulate you, Kenny, today. Thank you. Everybody else who's, you know you're getting an award? Yeah. So wa watch what we're doing here. <laughs> Why aren't you up here? No, you're not. We'll come check it out. So come on, all right, we'll do it this way. Okay, here we go. LG's eaten at Kenny's places, um, and his patio will be open soon. Jacqueline Jones, where's Jacqueline Jones? <laughs> Jacqueline Jones from Brockton is the founder of the Harambe Learning and Cultural Center. It's a center that offers courses and events to educate people on African American history and culture in the United States. We need that more than ever. Congratulations, Jacqueline. She comes from Pittsfield today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Shirley is the founder of the Women of Color Giving Circle, the Youth Alive Performing Arts Group, and the Rites of Passage and Empowerment Program. She helps recruit teachers of color to Pittsfield schools. We met years ago when I was running. I was so wowed by you, Shirley, and continued to be. Congratulations. the president and CEO of the Family Health Center of Worcester. He works every day, and Kate Walsh is shaking her head, she knows, uh, bringing health, well-being, and equity to the community. Thank you, Lou. Dana Ribeiro. Dana Ribeiro from New Bedford. Thank you. It's great. So Dana, uh, Dana comes to us today from New Bedford, where she is the Massachusetts liaison for community outreach and engagement for Vineyard Wind, which right now is powering 30,000 homes in Massachusetts. She's also a former member of the New Bedford City Council. She's been a leader. You see the hugs, because we've known Dana for a long time, doing the, doing the hard and the good work. Congratulations, Dana. Renee. 
Sundays, I think. Sure. Okay, great. Um, and, doc, and next we have Dr. Deborah Daglin. Dr. Deborah Dagwin has worked for many years on Cape Cod as an outreach worker for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault and for people experiencing homelessness. She was the first black woman ever elected to the Barnstable Town Council, where she served for 12 years. Congratulations, Deborah. Congratulations. I also just want to recognize two um, folks who could not be with us today but deserve recognition. Renee Dozer of Boston is a union electrician and a business agent for a local 103, IBEW. We know Renee has been paving the way for other women and people of color to access financial freedom through family sustaining careers in the trades. So, congratulations to Renee. And also, Carl Howell, who's the Director of Housing and Homeless Services for Community Teamwork in Lowell. He oversees shelter and residential programming and also expanded youth services programming. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our awardees today. And uh, with that, I'm now going to turn the program back over to our fabulous chair, Tanisha Sullivan. Thank you, uh, Governor Healy, and truly thank you to each of uh, those who received citations today. I want to call out that during our, over the past year, we visited eight communities across the Commonwealth. And so each of these individuals, some of them participated directly in our community listening sessions and just brought forth such powerful testimony um, to the council and others are working in communities, in the communities we visited. And so we want to thank you for the contributions that you've made to the work that we will continue to do. We look forward to partnering with you going forward. I want to, as we prepare to close, um, I am going to invite uh, Pastor uh, Derenette back um, to close us in prayer. But before she does, we would be remiss if we did not uh, all rise uh, to sing uh, the Black National Anthem, lift every voice and sing. And so I want to ask uh, Reverend Bodrick, a member of our council, to come forward to help lead us. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Chairwoman Sullivan. Thank you to each and every one of you. I think in the great spirit of James Weldon Johnson and his brother Rosamond Johnson, who penned this song in the year 1900 in the month of February, it is important that we understand and have reverence for this moment that we are in in our time, where the forces of evil try to pull us back to places where none of us want to go back again. And so I'm thankful that our governor and our lieutenant governor are standing bold and standing strong, saying that Massachusetts will continue to lift every voice and sing. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. 
Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Okay. So let me just say that um, next time, next time is going to be Pam Everhart, who leads us in Lift Every Voice and Sing with Reverend Broderick. I heard you, Pam. <laughs> uh, I, um, I definitely, typically we would do all the verses, but you know, um, cause we're black. Uh, but, but, but we also honor time. And so, um, so definitely um, thank you, uh, Pastor Broderick for leading us. And I'd like to invite Pastor Duranette to now come and close us. Thank you. It is my distinct honor to share the benediction and final blessing on all of you here uh, as we end our program. And what a wonderful program it is. Thank you. As we prepare to leave this place, we ask for a special blessing. Lord, may your presence lead us in the paths of righteousness. Bless us with the strength and courage to live our truth. May we all be a living testimony of your love and grace, and let this light shine before all those we encounter. Continue to keep us and those we love safe from harm, and bless us with your protection and provision. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Thank you. Be blessed. <laughs>